Would you pray with me for just a moment? Lord, may it be so that you would lead us through this time. I have some plans of what I want to do, but I would really love it if you led me, Lord, because I am just kind of scrambling about, uh, clutching and grabbing at whatever I can find. And, Lord, you are the solid place. You are the rock that I stand on, and you are the light that calls me and that shows me the way. It's true for all of us, Lord, so show us the way through this time. In Jesus' name, amen. You can have a seat. I, uh, I'll tell you some of, some of my story as we go, um, but um, I'll just put this blanket o- over the whole thing that you have found yourselves, whether it's your first week or your hundredth week here, you have found your, yourselves in a, in, an, in, an, in a wonderfully awkward and honest group of people here. And uh, I have said in the past that the most, the least honest place on the block is the church building, and not so here. Um, so if you don't like awkward con- conversations, you know, w- during a prayer or or a bathroom break, feel f- you you might want to go because it's gonna get it's gonna get weird. Not just with me, but with Neil and with the people around you. He's been training you, and the Lord's been training you to just to just go at it. And that is so beautiful, and it's part of why any time, you know, Neil, Neil called me a few months ago and said, hey, do you, can you recommend someone to come and do what you've done in the past? And I said, I can recommend me. I want to come and do this. I'm the, I'm the best at it. No one will be any, I mean, I'd lied and said, you know, I'm, thank you. I lied. I'm, I'm no one, the other people are all terrible. They they're all have drug problems, and, and they're, they're, they're criminals, and, and it's just, a, it's chaos. So he, he let me come. Uh, but I, but I, um, but I say that to say to you, I'm going to just be honest w- w- with you, not as a gimmick, not to be odd, but because I'm not good at a bunch of other things. What I'm, what, what I'm really any good at is just telling you the truth uh, as I see it, and hopefully it's the truth, uh, period. But I just want to speak to you honestly about life and, and some of what God has taken me through. Some of what I've been through um, isn't necessarily all that interesting, but it has caused me to look at the Lord new and it's caused me to see some parts about suffering and, and life that I had never seen. And, and so I want to share those things w- w- with you in the hope the Lord might continue to heal us all. So um, I'll start by telling you what I do, uh, and then I'll play a song about, uh, about what I do, kind of. But it's basically I live in Nashville, and I moved out there to, do, to write for other people uh, because I just, I'm 46 years old. I have four children and a, and a wonderful wife. I don't really like being gone from them. Uh, most of the people who do this are in their 20s or 30s, and they're skinny, and they dress really great, and, th- and they, they look, look like they've had work done, whether they have or not. They just it, they, they look awesome, and they love being on stage. I don't really love it all that much. I just want to make things, and, and I love it if I can make something and someone else can go do something with it. So that's I moved out there to, to do that, and it's going fine. But one thing that's happened is, you know, the sort of profity, pokey part of me gets gets edited out in that, because if you listen to any, any, any Christian radio, it's, it's, it's a fairly sanitized uh, view of the kingdom and, and of the world. And I'm not thrilled about that, but I'm trying to bring change slowly uh, uh, to, to that world. So, uh, but one of the things that your Christian radio station may say to you is they may say, um, they may promise you uh, on the little com- the, the, the commercial thing, it, it'll say, uh, always positive, always encouraging, always safe for the family, for the whole, for the whole family. And I think that happened, that last bit happened because they realized, oh, if I put on the pop radio station, the country radio station, i got to tell my kids why that person is talking about sex or, 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 or drinking or divorce or something that they're not, sh- not quite ready to tell their kid about, right? And then, and then Christian station, we got you covered. It'll be, it'll be encouraging and easy, and your kid can just, you know, they can enjoy it. But here's the problem. If we start getting into Jesus, you're going to have to deal with that, that stuff anyway because all that stuff's going to gonna come up. Um, you know, the, uh, on some of the songs, if you go to iTunes or wherever and buy, there'll be an E that, that, that's on them, and the e, the e means explicit, means there's explicit things. I think Christian music should have an E that just means explain, you know. Like, this is going to need some explaining. This won't just be like a swallow it down passive experience. You're, you're going to have to work on this. So with that heart, I just started thinking about safety and how, and how if we promise people that, 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 the, that their music is always safe, well, does that mean that, that the God of the music is always safe? And, and if so, if I go through something dangerous and hard, is he, is he able? Can he take care of it? Uh, and I was reading the Chronicles of Narnia because I love it and because I have children and I like, to, I like to read them books that, that I like too. There's a part in the Chronicles of Narnia in, in The Lion, Witch, and the Wardrobe where Susan, 
goes to Narnia for the first time, sees this little girl and goes to Narnia, and there's a beaver there whose name is Mr. Beaver, because as good as a writer as C.S. Lewis was, his, his, idea, his naming wasn't his best thing. Um, and, and so Mr. Beaver is, is uh, this beaver who's telling her about Narnia and how it goes there, and he's telling her about Aslan, which is this character that represents Jesus. And she, Susan's assuming he's a person because she's only dealt with people at this point, ex- except this one, this, this, this be- beaver. So at some point she realizes he's a lion, and she says something like, well, is he safe? And Mr. Beaver says something like, of course not. Who said anything about safe? He's a lion, but he's good, and he's the king. So imagine that. He's, he's good, and he's the king. So as dangerous as, as he might be, don't worry. And that's the Lord, I think, that we have is he's as dangerous as they get, but he's good, and he's in charge. So that ought to be comfort, right? So I wanted to write about that, and I, and I wanted to remind, remind myself that whatever I face, that I have a God who is dangerous enough to deal with it. This is called He is Not Safe. And I poke a little bit at, at my job uh, in the song, too. Because I have a microphone and you don't. He ain't trying to write a number one song. He don't care if the radio plays him. He won't ever stop saying mysterious things. He don't worry about coming on strong. He's not trying to offend you. But he'll do what he has to, whatever trouble it brings. But if the devil himself comes against you, there ain't nobody else can defend you. He is not safe. He's not supposed to be. You're going to want somebody wild and dangerous on your side when you face you one true enemy, only a fierce and reckless love is going to save your life. The Lord is good, but make no mistake, he is not safe. And if he ever gets a mega church crowd, he can take a sack lunch and feed them. Oh, but if he starts preaching, you never know what he'll say. Because every word coming out of his mouth is like a sword with two sharp edges. Yes, mercy is a dangerous message, but it's the only way. Because if the devil himself comes against you, there ain't nobody else can defend you. Oh, he is not safe. He's not supposed to be. You're going to want somebody wild and dangerous on your side When you face your one true enemy Only a fierce and reckless love is going to save your life The Lord is good, but make no mistake He is not out to get you, he's not keeping score But he refuses to let you be captive anymore. And he knows the price of freedom is the shedding of his blood. Yeah, he's deadly serious about his love. And he is not safe. He's not supposed to be. You're going to want somebody wild and dangerous on your side When you face you one true enemy Only a fierce and reckless love is going to save your life The Lord is good, but make no mistake He is not safe So I, um, I, I, six years ago, uh, my father was fishing in the Gulf of Mexico, and he drowned. And my brother was with him. My brother calls me. Some of you heard the story. Calls me 1030 at night. You know, the phone rings at 1030 at night on a Sunday night. You know something's not quite 
the way it should be. Pick it up. My brother says, uh, Dad has drowned, and you need to go tell Mom. I live in the same town as my mom, so I get in the car. I go tell my mom, knock on her, knock on her door at 11 o'clock at night, which definitely means something's wrong. And so began the end of the life we thought we would have, right? And I uh, had a way I thought life was going to go. And in addition to grieving the loss of my father, I started grieving that, that my life wasn't going to go like I thought. And some of you have had things happen in your life where you say, my life was going this way. I had it all figured out. You weren't necessarily controlling it or being uh, 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 unreasonable. You just had a way it made sense it was going to go, and then it's not going like that because of something. And you're grieving that, and that is, we don't know how to help you. I'm sorry, we, we, we're, we're good at giving you casseroles when someone dies and coming to the hospital when you're sick. We don't know what to do with you when your life goes differently than we expected, so we're trying. Okay, but keep that in mind when other people are having that, and you can try to help them too. But part of what I did was I just got depressed, which was not a great response, but I just got depressed. And I, and I clinically, you know, I, I had medication and I had counseling and all that and stuff I'm not proud of, but I'm just going to say it out loud because some of you have never heard that in church. So there you go. I got depressed, I got medication, I got counseling, and it helped me. All right? I also read the Bible. I also prayed. I also talked to people who were spiritual, and that helped too. It all helped. It all mattered. And I've talked about that sort of vaguely in some of my songwriting since it happened because here's the deal. I mean, my life was miserable for those four or so years, but I wrote some really good songs out of it. I don't know why. It just kind of like that was the way I, it was just what, what, that was, that's what happened. All of a sudden I was better at this. Um, and I wouldn't trade it. I'd, I'd rather have my dad back and I'd rather have not been, been, a, been a not a very good father or, or husband for four years. But we are where we are and... You didn't pay for this, so you get some free songs out of my depression. So, um, uh, bonus. So, um, I want to, but I, but I've been vaguely talking about my depression and anxiety stuff through the different songs in that season, and I suddenly realized I haven't really talked about this like on the nose. I just tell about it, talk about it in stories and in, and in cryptic things. So, I want to write something that like really talked about it, and I realized that so much of it was about fear. That when I was I was d- depressed, I was just afraid all the time. I was afraid of being. Being, being judged. I was afraid that no one liked me. I was afraid that the that, that, that shameful parts of me, everyone knew them. I was afraid that everyone was sick of me, I, whatever. I was afraid I would ruin my marriage. I was afraid my kids would get tired of their dad not being good at stuff. And I got it really into the 23rd Psalm as I was coming out of this season of life recently. I got into the 23rd Psalm, and I just got so excited because I saw these weird things I'd never seen. And it starts with Jesus, with, with the Psalm saying, he makes me lie down, which I had never understood why that's there, but I can't, there's no translation that doesn't have that. In every translation, he's kind of forcing it, right? Because you, you and me, we need, to be, we need to be made to lie down sometimes. And then, and then that's, the, that's the tone of the whole thing after that, right, is that then he leads me beside some, some still waters, and all this is meant to make me calm down and, and, and realize who's in charge. And then, after all that's, that peaceful stuff, he, he goes with me through the valley of the shadow of death, and he has a stick that he's, that I'm, by the way, I'm a sheep in this story. And that stick is, is, is multi-use, and it has been used on me. And I'm not, making, I'm not saying anything about God that's cruel. I'm saying that stick has been used to prod me and move me, and it's not always maybe comfortable. But he has a stick as I go through the valley, and, that, and, and it says his rod and his staff comfort me, right? And then he makes dinner in front of everyone that hates me, everyone that wants to kill me and ruin me and, and wishes I wouldn't succeed. He makes dinner in front of them for me and just starts pouring drinks. And my cup's just overflowing. And then it says that kind of, of care and, and, and power will follow me all the days of my life. So I just wanted to sing about it, right? I mean, wouldn't, wouldn't you want to sing about that? So this is called The Things I'm Afraid Of. And I've never played it until today for anybody. So um, if you never hear it again, it's because it, cause I've, cause it flopped. I am shaking and my heart's pounding. You always take me, make me lie down in peaceful fields where I can clear my head. Cause I get so overcome with anxiety Like there's an enemy living inside of me Like a mocker yelling out, telling lies to me And I don't feel brave, but I don't have to be Cause I walk through the valley of shadows And it scared me half to death But you're with me everywhere I go So I don't give up yet My fears would surely kill me If I didn't know the truth 
things that I'm afraid of are afraid of you. When my emotions turn against me, not faith nor reason could convince me that you have patience left to fight for me. When my depression is affecting every ounce of me, I can get the medication and the counseling. Still, I can hear the fear calling out to me. And I don't feel brave, but I don't have to be. Because I walk through the valley of shadows, and it scared me half to death. But you're with me everywhere I go. So I don't give up yet My fears would surely kill me If I didn't know the truth The things that I'm afraid of Are afraid of you Oh, oh. You prepare a table for me Right in front of my worst enemies and you're as calm and relaxed as can be there's no place where the demons won't find me but just wait till they see who's standing behind me i walk through the shadows and scared me half to death but you're with me everywhere i go so I don't give up yet My fears that surely kill me If I didn't know the truth Things that I'm afraid of Are afraid of you Oh, oh, oh. The things that I'm afraid of Are afraid of you Thanks. Whew, didn't blow it. Didn't blow it. So I wrote a song about, about my wife. We've been married 20 years, which um, I think is a pretty, pretty big deal, you know? I mean, yeah, come on. Let's, let's. Got four children, too. I adopted them, so. Sorry, I'm just having to need some strokes, clearly. Um, so anyway, no, but I'm, I love my wife. She's fantastic. And last night I was, I, would, I played a little bit of this song for, for Neil. And I was, I was like, yeah, I probably won't play that tomorrow. It's not like a jesus -y song. It's just a love song. He said, you need to play that for, for, not for a variety of reasons. And he said that earlier. But so I want to play this for you. I just, I want to uh, remind you that a marriage well lived and a marriage just endured and a marriage worked through matters. And some of you have had difficulties in that, and I'm not here to judge you for that. It's so hard to be married and so rewarding if you can make it work. And so I just hope hopefully this will like prod, prod some of you on in your journey, either, either through it or to it. So this is called Her. She would drink champagne just to celebrate that it's Tuesday night and the kids are all in bed. She can laugh out loud till the tears roll down at a joke I made that no one else would get. She reads me like a treasure map. When we both know the truth is that the greatest treasure that I have is her. Cause I'm not brave or full of faith, but I swear she gives me courage. And I'm not confident, but somehow when she smiles, I got no worries. Call it true love, I'm tangled up in everything about her. I'm not near as scared of dying as I'd be living without her. She is most alive 
But when she's outside And when the sun shines on her face She's 21 She's adventurous Enough for both of us She's the reason for every cool thing that I've done She just texted me on my thing, and, and I just want to be like, I'm, this is for you. <clears throat> She's effortlessly what I need. She's fire and electricity right up there with the air I'm breathing now. And I'm not brave or full of faith, but I swear she gives me courage. I'm not confident. But somehow when she smiles, I got no worries. Call it true love. I'm tangled up in everything about her. And I'm not near as scared of dying as I'd be living without her. Sorry I'm rambling. But I can't keep this secret any longer. See, if I'm standing, it's only because I'm leaning on her. Because I'm not brave or full of faith. But I swear she gives me courage. I'm not confident, but somehow when she smiles, I got no worries. Call it true love. I'm tangled up in everything about her. And I'm not near as scared of dying as I'd be living without her. I'm not near scared of dying as I'd be living without her. Thank you. Uh, I <clears throat> I think that one of the dangers of of um, of getting deep into your struggle and your and your grief and your hurt and your depression, whatever it is, <clears throat> is that you can do it alone. And even, it, you know, so here, here's, here's what happens. Something bad, bad happens, something difficult happens in your life, and everyone comes in and helps you and loves on you and ministers to you, and, and you feel very loved. And then, and then their lives go on, and yours maybe don't as soon. And it's not their fault. They just need to go on with their, with, with their stuff. Maybe something hard is, is going on for them, you know. But yours don't, and then you start thinking, well, when am I going to, you know, is, I gonna, is this going get, gonna to get better or, or whatever, you know? And you feel like everyone's tired of me, and nobody gets it, and I'm all alone. And I, and I, I felt some of that, and I would watch. I had a friend who, who died of, of leukemia a couple of years ago, and I watched his wife just feel alone. She, um, Neil, you'll think this is, this is beautifully sad. We, we did Lent back at my old church. I don't know if you guys do Lent, but it's like a, a sort of an, an old church thing where you, during the Easter season, you fast from things. And I, and I remember when her husband was in, in the middle of cancer treatment about to, about to die. I said, Br Brittany, what are you going to do for Lent? And she said, I'm fasting from drinking alone. How rich, how much is there there? That's a lot, right? <sighs> okay, so anyway... <laughs> Uh, that's the kind of like thing that happens, you know. And so, anyway, I just I was I was uh, interested in how how I would you know I'd had my own set session of grief and depression. I was coming out of it a little bit, and I had this friend now going going through the same thing. And so I was like, I got to figure this out. So I just started seeing these passages about Jesus suffering and thinking, oh, maybe that's kind of like the emotion that I was feeling. You know, he goes and he he's he's uh, uh, his friend L L Lazarus dies. You know, this is a crazy story. Okay, so. <clears throat> so it says, he heard that Lazarus was very sick and was going to die soon, so he waited, right? I always thought there was like a translation problem, like the make me lie down. So he waited, like, you know, because I think maybe Jesus just loves like a good dramatic moment, you know, not, not, not minimizing. I'm saying he knew I can do something awesome here, right? And it's going to be hard. So he, so, so he waits. Then he comes, uh, uh, and Martha, you know, comes out and is like, he's dead. I know what you can do. 
why didn't you why didn't you show up sooner and bring him back you know and jesus is like well don't you know about the the re- 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 resurrection and she says oh yeah of course and she's thinking like doctrinally like the resurrection oh we're all going to come back and he's like no 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 Hold my beer. You know, sorry, I didn't say that. I'm just kidding. Neil told me to say it again. I said it last time as an accident, and he said, say it again. So now I'm not sure. But anyway, no, he's like, hold on. You think resurrection, just wait. Watch this. And he goes. But then he cries. Then he cries. Right? After all that, he cries about it. Because death is sad. Even if he's going to bring him back, death is sad. It's just you can't, you can't shake it. We can tell you. People are like, when I die, I have a celebration service for my life. I guess, but I'm going to be sad that you died. So I want to be sad some too. You know, it's just part of it. So Jesus cries at Lazarus' death, even though he brings him back. He, he, he goes um, into the temple, and he's furious, and he makes a whip and knocks stuff around. He's having like a moment of real anger, the kind of moment that we would tell you, hey, hey, calm down, calm down. And he's knocking stuff around, making whips and stuff. And then he goes to the garden later on, and his, his, his disciples who are deadbeats j- j- just like we are fall asleep a bunch, and he's praying, and he's praying so stressed out that he's ble- he starts bleeding out of his pores, right? So I think he gets it. When I feel extreme, not just he's there with me, but he's been there, right? And he's done that. So I just want to talk about that and say, oh, oh, hey, hold, hold on. I don't, just have, I don't just have a God who comes to me in my grief. I have a God who, has, who understands it. It's like, hey, yeah, this one time I, I was so stressed out, I bled through my pores. This one time I was so angry, I like knocked around the temple. I'm not saying he sinned. He wasn't sinning. But it means maybe we need to redefine how we deal with some of these feelings, right? Because everyone, we all think we're sinning when we feel so sad. And sometimes maybe we are. I don't know. But in this, but at least we know Jesus had some of those feelings too. This is called good company. And I hope you feel like, like the Lord is near all the time, even in your weak moments. If sadness was a sin, Jesus never would have cried. But that's exactly what he did when his good friend Lazarus died. And he knew that he would raise him up. And still the Lord was sad enough to grieve if heartache was a crime consider Jesus in the garden when he knew it was his time and there was no better option and he had to take that cup and it stressed him out so much it made him bleed if you've ever been so overwhelmed that you can barely breathe my friend you're in good company if anger is so wrong how about Jesus in the temple it doesn't sound like he was calm when he was knocking over tables And we know his heart was perfect, so there must have been some purpose for it all. If you've ever gotten mad at all the brokenness you see, my friend, you're in good company. darkness you are not alone there is a presence that will not let you go every tear that you have cried every trial you have known he's known it too in the darkness you are not alone there is a presence will not let you go but every tear that you have cried every trial you have known he's known it too so if defending your own honor and fighting for your rights are really so important how come Jesus gave his life to pay for our salvation he let a bunch of fools portray him as a criminal 
If you've ever been humiliated, misunderstood, ridiculed, and hated, if you've ever gone through hell and faced the devil no one else could even see, my friend, you're in good company. You're in good company in the darkness. You are not alone. There is a presence that will not let you go. Every tear that you have cried, every trial you have known, he's known it too. Thank you. Um, during those difficult times, what you'll start to do is start to ask the Lord if he's real. And, you'll, and, you'll, and you probably will have a little bit of a faith crisis if you're like me. And you'll occasionally say, does he really care about this? And look, I'm going to be honest with you. There are times when I pray for things and I don't get them. And I don't know how to pray for healing just yet. I've had, Neil and I were sharing stories last night of kind of random things that we felt like were, were miracles. Because they would had no explanation, but they weren't that important. Like just weird things that happen in your life. And you're like, that, that shouldn't have happened, but it didn't really, no one like came back from the dead or anything. It was just like, I found something, you know, right? But these things happen. And you're like, I know God's real because of this, but I, you know. So I'm just going to be honest. I, I occasionally in hard times, I say, why does this happen? And I don't have answers. And I think some preachers are good at answering that. I'm not so good at that. But here's the thing. I need to believe. And I must, I believe because I must, because if if all of if all of this is all that there is, that's craziness. That's silly. And there's this guy who who said he was God, and they hated him for it. The government and the, the religious people all hated him, just like we would. We would all be like, "Who do you think you are, telling everybody that you're God? You're just like us. You're just from the you're just from Sugarland." You know, they're like, "What do you? This guy from Nazareth? What, what does he think he is?" And they killed him. And here's the thing: he faced that. This is fantastic. He faced that. Uh, and it stressed him out. We know that. But by his own power, he got up after that. And when he came back out, this was, he had a lot, of, a lot of messages to us. And the obvious ones you've heard a million times at church. But here's one that maybe is less obvious. And that message is this. I beat that thing you're afraid of. I beat it. I'm, I'm, I'm better than that. That's what that song I played a minute ago. That stuff's all afraid of me now. And it's the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead is in you. If you're a Jesus follower, if you're a believer. And so I just, that, that's, that's all I got. That's what I have, you know. And so I just keep moving forward. Occasionally my prayers get answered. Occasionally they don't get answered. And I, I, I'm just doing my very best. But, but this next song, I just, I was in a, a season of, I had a long season of unbelief and of struggle. And suddenly I looked back over all the, the grief and the depression and the difficulty and the shame. And I realized, oh, wait, I believe in God more than I did. I believe in him more now than I, than, than I did then. And the way I say it is I, I think before a lot of that stuff, I had a wide, like a wide swath of things that I believed a little. There's all these things I believed. I kind of believed them. Now I have a few things, but I believe them, I believe them a lot. I believe them hard. I believe them all the way, right? And I'm okay with that. So you might ask me a question about some specific part of theology, and I'll be like, I don't have a clue about any of that. I don't even know that I care. But Jesus wins, and he's for me. For some reason. So anyway, I just wanted to like encourage you. I don't know why I believe more than, than, than I did. It, it's not because I'm spiritual. It just happened. But I want to play you a song about it. It's called More Now. I remember when I was young. So carefree and unafraid. Every doubt could be overcome with childlike faith. But the day of my trial would come like an earthquake to my belief. And the doubts I could not outrun brought me to my knees. And I thought I was done And I almost gave up But you kept me from going 
down. Now I can't shake this truth after all I've been through somehow. Oh, I believe in you more now. So I don't need to understand. If you pushed me, you'll let me fall. Oh, the days when your tender hand was a wrecking ball. The illusion of my control is shattered and been replaced with a hunger deep in my soul and a childlike faith. Cause I thought I was done And I almost gave up But you kept me from going down Now I can't shake this truth After all I've been through somehow Oh, I believe in you more now Oh, I believe in you Oh, I believe there questions that may not get answers no matter the prayers that we pray i believe when it feels like the whole world is breaking that somehow your hope still remains oh i believe though we're dying still you are healing and raising us up from the grave no even death cannot steal us away Cause I thought I was done and I almost gave up, but you kept me from going down. Now I can't shake this truth after all I've been through somehow. Oh, I believe in you more now. Okay, real, real quick, I'm going to do one more, and then I'll be done. Thank you guys for listening. I'll just say real quick, I have CDs out there. Uh, you can look up on Google what those are, um, but they're audio devices you can play music on if you have a player. Um, also put a drink on them and it'll keep your coffee table from getting a stain. Uh, but I don't want them anymore because I, no one buys them because they're not useful. So you can take them as many as you want, pay whatever you want, or nothing. Um, please, just, I mean... Uh, yeah, I'd like to have enough for the for the next service, but 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 take some, okay. And if you don't if you don't have a way to play them and you want something to, to listen to, uh, you can go on all the other places and listen to it, iTunes and Spotify and all and all that. Um, so uh, real, real quickly, there's, there's a thing I call the Saturday principle, and it's this idea that on Friday they killed Jesus, and everyone thought, wait, this was going somewhere. What happened? I thought he was the king, and they killed him. This was a sort of a, an anticlimactic moment. And they didn't know Sunday was coming. We, we know Sunday was coming, but they didn't know. So there's this Saturday where just like, oh, well, you know, that day after something awful happens and you wonder when it's over. When, when you wonder what's going to happen. Why, why, why'd that happen? And I think a lot of our life has lived in, lived in that tension between a, something hard happening. Like I said a minute ago, a while ago, your life taking a turn you didn't expect. And you're hoping for some kind of a re- resurrection, but you can't know. You don't have a hindsight like we have about Jesus. And I just wanted to sing over that. No, no, hold on. Jesus is always doing something, and he's and he's and he's coming back, and it always looks like it's gonna, it always looks like it's gonna be bad, and then he does something great. So I hope you press on. This is called "This Ain't Over." And ironically, when I'm done with the song, uh, this is over. There was a plan to do us harm. By all accounts, it was successful. It worked just like a charm And now we're bruised And barely breathing Struggling to just believe And maybe even wondering if it's over But here's the thing There's something more Something nobody was expecting They'd never seen before So keep your eyes on the horizon It's coming like a storm Now you've been warned Yeah, you've been warned This ain't over, not by a long shot. We are not even close to being done. This 
ain't over. We won't give up without a fight. We will not run. Cause this ain't over. And when it's over, we will overcome. There was a plan to save us all. By all accounts, it was a failure. And everybody saw that Jesus died. We were humiliated and evil celebrated. And we were afraid that it was over. Here's the thing, he rose again, and he looked death in the eye and said, you're done, you'll never win, so we don't worry about the story, because we know how this thing ends, and while we're waiting, we'll keep on saying, this ain't over. Fight, we will not run Cause this ain't over And when it's over We will overcome Between Friday and Sunday There is one day that feels like a thousand years and we grieve because we have lost it all and believe for the impossible and we try not to fear. And if we listen close, we can almost hear. This ain't over, no, not by a long shot. This ain't over. We will not run Cause this ain't over And when it's over We will overcome We will overcome Thanks.